Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. This current video is on how to create test procedures, the document that we use to execute a test. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. In this video, we will learn about definitions and terminology and how to create a test procedure. Let's go ahead and cover definitions and terminology for test procedures. So what is a test procedure? A test procedure is the instructions or guide for how we execute a particular test from our test procedure. This is the procedural process that you, a delegate, or a third party test lab will need to follow in order to perform the desired test to the desired requirements at the highest level of quality possible. You need to provide the instructions for the procedure in a clear and concise manner. It should be short and sweet and written with as few words as possible. Don't write a novel or people are not going to read the instructions in their entirety and will potentially miss important steps. Let's go ahead and cover how to create a test procedure template. Alright, so let's cover the document control stuff first. The document control information should be in a header on every page of your document. You will see such things as document numbers and revisions. These indicate the document control number for your test procedure and the revision of the procedure that you are viewing. As an operator or an executor of the test, you need to ensure that you have the correct document open for the test that you are about to perform and that you are using the latest and greatest release revision. Which brings us to the next point. Make sure you are viewing a test procedure that has a status of release and not under review, draft, or obsolete. Or you might not be running the test to the required latest testing requirements. The header should also include the date that the document was released, the author of the test procedure, and a page number for each page in the test procedure. Use a page number format such as page 1 of 14 as in the example. Also, you need to include a footer as well. This is where you put things such as a confidentiality statement. Okay, let's talk about the title page. This is where you put the title of the test procedure, the name of the author, which could also be included in the header, a table to list out units that are going to be tested, their pedigree or test stage, which could be EBT or B sample as an example, and the serial number for the test unit. Or you could include the test unit or test sample table later in your procedure. Up to you, but easier for the readers to see this on the first page, so that they know they are looking at the right procedure and report of interest. Going back to the title, it should be very clear what is being tested. You should put things like cold weather temperature soap test procedure, and not be lazy and put something like just test procedure. Also include the words test report in the title. If you take my advice and decide to combine your test procedure and report template into a single document. Also include the document revision history table on the title page too. Or you can put it at the end of your document, up to you, whatever floats your boat. Or the document control guy's boat. For the next section, you will want to include a table of contents. This allows quick navigation to sections of interest for the reader. Make the sections and page numbers a link so that the reader can easily click a section in the table of contents and go to the section that interests them. You can also include a table of figures in this section or at the end of the test document. Whichever you prefer, no wrong choice in regards to placement. Next up is scope and purpose. List out the scope of the test procedure and the purpose of performing the test. On to applicable documents. This is where you put the document number and title for the test plan that this test procedure was derived from and any other supporting test documentation for this test procedure. If you decide to have a separate test report, include the title and document number for your test report template. You also need to have a section for acronyms and definitions. Don't assume that the guy or gal running the test or reviewing the document knows each and every acronym or definition you put into the procedure. So have this section to make sure all terminology is clear and understood by the reader. You will need to add tables such as test equipment, which is where you list equipment description, make, model, serial number, and calibration dates. Also, you will need to add tables such as test operator, technician, or test engineer. 
This is where you enter your name if you are performing the test, so that in the future, if there are any questions, they will be able to find you and get answers and clarification on what was done and be able to ask any questions related to the test results. You will also see tables such as environmental conditions. These are the required ranges and tolerances for what the test lab should be conditioned to, such as ambient temperature ranges, humidity ranges, and even altitude requirements. So keep that in mind when identifying a test lab location. The test documentation will also include a table of specifications for the part, subsystem, or system to be tested, including electrical parameters, test limits, temperature parameters and test limits, and mechanical parameters, if applicable to the test. The test document will also need to have a test procedure section. For the test procedure, you can either do it line by line written instructions and write out each step using worded instructions or use a flow diagram. I recommend using a flow diagram for your test procedure. Also minimize worded and leverage photos in place of extra verbiage. A picture speaks a thousand words, so keep that in mind. One other pointer, while English majors and perfectionists will cringe, minimize words like the. For instance, write press green button instead of press the green button, or flip toggle switch on control panel instead of press the green button or flip the toggle switch on the control panel. Written instructions flow better when following along and performing tasks than trying to write an English paper. So minimize the the thes in your verbiage. In the test procedure section, include any visual inspection or pretests or references to visual inspection or pretest documents. A post visual or post test procedure process or reference to the documents and pretest, test, and post test results. Tables to indicate pass fail and any test values required for inputted for that test. The next section should contain a section for pretest, test, and post test photos, including photo or photos of the test setup. The next section will be the test summary field, where you enter results, observations, and descriptions of any failures that occurred. The section after that is the recommendations and conclusions field. This is where you enter next steps, recommendations based on the test results, and conclusions on what was found from testing. The next section up is your appendix, which is where you will add any test graphs or post-process data. Don't add massive tables of raw data. If you want to provide the raw data, add a reference to the location of the data rather than dumping it into your report. Everyone will appreciate it, including that data-hungry design engineer who will go over every digit in the test data. Next up is the document references section. This is where you put in your documents that are referred to throughout your test procedure. Getting close to the end here, I promise. Next, we will have document owners. This is where you put folks who are responsible for maintaining and tracking the test document template and can very well be the author of the document who is responsible. Finally, we have the approval section. This is where you get sign-offs from all stakeholders for this particular part subsystem or system and the test and leadership's approval. And that's it folks. The key takeaways from this video are keep your verbiage to a minimum. The test procedure instructions should be short and concise. Less is more with procedures. Follow the guidelines in this video on content to include for your test procedure. I recommend combining your test procedure and test report document into one document. It keeps everything consolidated and minimizes the test documentation that you have to create and manage. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments or need any help with your test procedures or anything else related to reliability tests and validation topics, feel free to reach out to me at one of the description links below. Thanks again for watching this video. And if you liked it, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Enjoy the rest of your day.